Trevor, what do you call this? A spatula. A spatula is the flat one you flip eggs with. What do you call it? I call this a spoonula, because Rachel Ray called it a spoonula. And I follow my goddess, Rachel Ray. Rachel, come on the show. I won't be as creepy as I just was. <laughs> Welcome to Mythical Kitchen, where dreams become food. Today we are making instant ramen churros. Churros are really hard to make, but delicious. Ramen is very easy to make, but also delicious. But we can make those two things even more deliciouser by giving it the old Mythical Kitchen special and blending it up and deep frying. So follow along, and if you do, we got the time codes right there, broken down into three easy steps. We got the full recipe down in the description. I feel like I haven't taken a breath in a long time, so we're just gonna see how long I can talk. Let's get cooking. <sighs> We gotta make the ramen at this point. I'm using top ramen with chili. We're not using the flavor packet for this at all. We're just using the noodles, but I like to get the chili flavor because I take the flavor packet and I put it on vegetables because it's the only way my body will eat vegetables if it's covered in a bunch of processed orange powder. But anyways, we're gonna get a couple bricks of ramen boiling. This is half milk and half water. If you used all milk, milk has a tendency to, what's the word? Scald. Milk tends to scald, so we're gonna cut it with some water and then we're just gonna get these ramen noodles cooked. We are eventually going to actually blend those ramen noodles into a pastry dough. So churros are actually made from a pastry dough that is called pata shu. It's a very finicky pastry that you have to cook for a long time, but I think we can kind of achieve the same texture using ramen. At least we're gonna find out. I'm, I'm very confident in this and I'm not normally a confident man, mired deep in insecurities, but I mask it with extreme narcissism on camera. So everyone's like, Josh is so full of himself. It's like, yeah, but it's only because I'm not. Anyway, so now we gotta start separating eggs. So we're just using the yolks for this because we wanna get some good little fattiness in there. We don't want that extra protein to really bind it. So we're just gonna separate these eggs. This is my favorite way to do it. It's kind of passing it back and forth between your shell or you can just do the old thing where you just crack it into your hand and then you just kind of pass it back and forth. Oh, fudge, dude! What you wanna do is you wanna get about one eighth of an egg white and three and two quarters yolks into a bowl. That's the recipe now, prove it wasn't. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna fly this ramen out. I gotta sink over there. So I gotta, I'm gonna drain the ramen because you gotta, we drain in it. Drain. Come on, Josh. Idiot, <laughs> kidding me, can't separate freaking eggs. All right, so you're just gonna drip some milk on the ground. So I'm gonna take this joint and shake it on the floor. We have our ramen that has been infused with the milk that's adding a little bit of extra fat in there. And then we're gonna go ahead and cream our ramen with our sugar. Someone Google that phrase, see if that's ever been uttered in the existence of the world. So we're just gonna pulse this a couple times. You want the ramen to really kind of break up and mix in that sugar. That's gonna actually dissolve the sugar. And we also wanna blend up the ramen to kind of release some of that steam, because otherwise you're gonna get a lot of moisture in your dough. So that's great. So now we have our ramen kind of half blended. We're gonna add some melted butter. I'm gonna add some softened butter. It can be melted. It's all gonna melt with a hot ramen anyways. And then I'm gonna add in a little bit of salt, a little bit of baking soda, and a little bit of baking powder. And then I'm gonna, where the, God, are you serious? No, 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 no. We should just only let me use a mortar and pestle at this point. That should be, that's a new rule here. Like no one give Josh the food processor, just give him like a stick and a bowl and let him work it out himself. Back in freshman year of football, people used to call it, like say that, they used to call me Neanderthal, because they said I had a real Neanderthal face. If you look, I have like a sloping forehead and big cheekbones and very small beset eyes to protect from attacks. And so I think I may have a kind of close, like a closer relationship to my Neanderthal relatives than other people have. And so what I'm saying is using basic tools, like a stick and a bowl, I'm much more suited for than this machine. I think the Luddites had it right. You know, the like technology's the downfall of us all. So now that we got the ramen kind of pulsed up in there, I'm gonna add some flour and then I'm gonna drop in my three and two quarters egg yolks and one eighth what? Put it back on, blend it, and then while it's blending, slowly stream in your eggs. Why? All right, so you're gonna put the stick back in your bowl and start bashing it up again. And now we're gonna take the eggs and we're gonna slowly stream them in here. That's gonna incorporate all the fat into the starch evenly. Man, I thought that was the part that I could remove. There's a part that you can remove. So we're taking our three and two quarters egg yolks and one seven eighth of an egg white-ish and we're gonna pour them in there slowly. There we go, and now we're making a nice smooth pastry dough. When we pipe out the churros, we don't want them to have any kind of like lumps in them. Be nice and smooth. I'm gonna take this off. I'm gonna scrape down the sides here. 
Yeah, that's looking nice. I mean, this is kind of what Padashu looks like. So now we gotta get our churro dough into a piping bag. I've often been criticized that I don't know how to use a piping bag and I don't know how to fill it because before I used to kind of clutch it like you're holding a very fragile baby. You know, not like those sturdy babies like they used to make. So <laughs> churros are made with a star tip attachment. That's gonna kind of push them out and uh, extrude them like the 90s volleyball basketball babies were extruded. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna fold the piping bag over and stand it up in a cup. And then we're gonna use this here orange thing. Trevor, what do you call this? A spatula. The spatula's a flat one you flip eggs with. Is that not flat? No, it's convex. What do you call it? I call this a spoonula, because Rachel Ray called it a spoonula. And I follow my goddess, Rachel Ray. Rachel, come on the show. I won't be as creepy as I just was. I can't make that promise. Do you believe that I was in charge of children at some point? Like in multiple points, I coached youth basketball. I, just, I got basketball babies on the brain. And I remembered that I coached 11 year olds in, in basketball, but once on a team, we had a 13 year old, we didn't tell anyone. Like his mom didn't want to drive him to a separate practice, his younger brother's on the team. And also one time I accidentally uh, escorted fire sauce from Taco Bell into a child's eyes that I was in charge of. Sorry, Ben. I hope you're doing great now, probably in college. But anyways, we got our churro dough in the piping bag. We're gonna let this rest a little bit. It's gonna solidify up. But first we are going to make a sriracha caramel sauce. I figure that's gonna tie together the ramen with the churro. We get a little sweet, get a little spicy, get a little funky, get down tonight. And we're gonna do that. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna make a caramel sauce. So we got a cup of sugar that's gonna chill in that pot. A lot of people say don't touch caramel when it's in a pan forming because you can get sugar crystals. I think you can kind of just whisk yourself through the sugar crystals. A lot of people will add, say a little bit of water to the caramel to help it. I don't think you need to do that, so I'm just not. Uh, I might be eating my words in a couple minutes, but we'll figure that out when we get there. So we're gonna add a stick of butter and some heavy cream to another pot. We're gonna get these heating together. Then we're gonna add our salt and sriracha. Salt shouldn't be in a bowl. We'll yeah, sriracha you should bowl, salt, not so much. Got some waiting to do. <laughs> so middle school, right, I was, I was about, let's call it about 5'11", 245, right? A big, like real, <laughs> playing, playing center. We, you know, I, there were some like big teens who were like 6'4", six, 6'5", six, but no one had the weight. It's all the Orange County parents, they didn't like me because I'd really bully their kids on the court. And so uh, I remember once I fouled out in a game and a parent just stands up and goes, get that monster out of there! I was like, I'm a child. You're an adult. What's wrong with you? Talk about sturdy babies. That's a sturdy basketball baby. Caramel burnt. So if your caramel burns, all you're gonna do is you're gonna kind of take it off and whisk it up. That's why I like to whisk my caramel. Caramel can go from perfect to burnt an in instant, but we got a nice dark amber color. So I'm put that back in the heat. And now we got all this butter and cream melted. And I'm simply going to whisk this in, keeping it on the heat, fizzling it slowly. Always watch your hands because this does get really steamy and can burn. I'm in incredible pain right now, but I'm trying to not let you show it. Just like I didn't show any of those other children mercy in my eighth grade basketball league. I will not show pain to you today. There we go. Now we're gonna pull it off the heat. It's gonna get some nice bubbles on there. If you see it breaking, just put it back on the heat and keep whisking it. But this is looking really incredible, actually. Not actually, I'm not surprised when I do good things in the kitchen because this is my job. Now I like to wait to add my salt. Really shot myself in the foot by doing this. I like to add my salt when all the caramel has actually come together. We're just using about a tablespoon in there. And then we're gonna add our sriracha as well. Just a little bit, just to kind of give you that little bit of hint of chili and garlic. When you eat the caramel and the churros, you're like, ooh, what's that there? That's a little surprise. Just like I'm surprised this 5'11", 245 pound teen has the conditioning that he does, because I ran the floor, man. All right, so now we actually gotta fry up those churros. We got our sriracha caramel. We're gonna get them dust in cinnamon sugar and fried, and then we're gonna relive our past more, probably. Welcome back to the show where I talk about my youth basketball exploits and sometimes cook. No, so right now we have to make our cinnamon sugar. We're gonna take some sugar, we're gonna take some cinnamon, we're gonna take a little bit of cayenne just for that piquancy, piquancy? Pecans, pecans. We're gonna put pecans in here. This is a little bit of cayenne pepper in there and we're just gonna whisk that up. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna fry off the churros and we're gonna get them directly into our little spiced cinnamon sugar. We're gonna get that spiced caramel on there and then we're gonna, I guess, eat them for nutrition and sustenance, but also comfort because food is many things. It's also pre-poo. How long are you supposed to sit on a bidet? So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna squeeze out. Derp. I got the oil at about 330 degrees here, then I'm just gonna cut it. That's good. So all you gotta do, you gotta squeeze it in there, and then you gotta pinch off the tip. I'm squeezing a couple more. I don't like to squeeze too much fresh dough in there at one time, because before the dough is set, it'll actually bind together. And so you wanna kinda give the first one some time, and then fry in batches, and just remember where it's at. I'm just gonna squeeze in about four inch round. 
All right, so we can let that fry. Let's look at this first one. That's frying up nice. You see they held their shape really well and they are getting some rise on them. That's because we had the baking soda in there and that's actually working with all the liquid and the flour. And so all the blended ramen in there is actually giving it like a really nice texture and sturdiness to it. And then you get the flour and the baking soda working to actually make it a pastry dough. This might be an actual, this might be an actual hack. Oh, same spot of sour of us, I'm getting charter. Anyone luck at the Irish Disney Channel, Ryan Merriweather? Boom. I'll let this fry for about one more minute. This is looking nice and crispy. Since this is a pretty dense dough, got a lot of egg, got a lot of blended pasta in there. We really wanna make sure it's cooked all the way through. So splash some oil at it. That's what I do when I get bored when I'm deep frying is I just start splashing hot oil. Don't, maybe don't, maybe just let it live. All right, so I'm gonna pull the churro out. I'm gonna give it a one, a two, a shabu shabu, and then we're gonna toss that right into the cinnamon sugar and just get a nice dusting on it and then pull that out. And then we're just gonna let that rest right on a cooling rack. That looks like a churro. It's kind of like a curvy turd, but that's what churros are a little bit, right? So we got this churro out and I'm gonna put that right in the sugar. You really wanna make sure that you're getting the churro right out of the fryer after just a little bit of a drain because the excess oil on the churro is actually what's gonna cause the sugar to stick. Then you get it nice and coated. I'm gonna keep frying these up. All we got left to do with plate. We're gonna keep frying this up. All got plate due is to now. We've got our churros plated up. Now all we gotta do is drizzy on these glizzies. Get real nice over the top. That is so gorgeous. This is gonna be incredible. Trevor, I am so excited for you. I'm excited for us to take this next step. All right, cool, so we got this all drizzled up. Now, we here at Mythical Kitchen, boy, do we love sure feeding ourselves, but even more so, we love stabbing people with uh, large Pleistocene looking weapons. I got the boom. Hi, Josh. I like I your outfit. Thank you. I like your outfit. I wear this every day. Can you back? I don't like walking <laughs> towards this. <laughs> it's right <laughs> in your throat. All right, sure. I'm gonna go ahead. I'm gonna try and spork you a good bite, all right? I love churros. I love cinnamon so much. Oh, are we going in? Yeah, yeah, go in. I'll listen to you later. Okay. Oh, oh where's it going? Whoa, no, no, wait. You get it? Yeah, I got it. Take some sauce. Trevor, put the dr drizzle in your mouth. I was, you're, you're the pastry expert. Does it taste like a churro? It does. I was worried the noodles were gonna make it like thicker and, and harder to cook through, but it's got a great texture for a churro. And the spicy caramel ah. is really good. Like it's a little bit kind of a salted caramel, but you get a little bit of chili on the back end and it's really tasty. I'm just gonna pick one up and eat well, it. Trevor, that's against the rules, but I respect you for being a game changer and I respect you all for showing up and watching the video. Thank you for stopping by Mythical Kitchen. We got new recipes out for you every week. We got new episodes of our podcast out every Wednesday, wherever you get your podcasts. Hit us up on Instagram at Mythical Kitchen with pictures of your mythical dishes under hashtag dreams become food. We'll see you all next time. Say goodbye, Trevor. Goodbye, Trevor. I knew you were gonna say that, you little dog. I was like, I hope you, <laughs> you said goodbye, dog, Trevor. You, you little scamp. Ah, <laughs> uh, we're so good. Rock it with a spork in your pocket. Get the spork tea now at mythical.com.